Okay, class, so in this video, I'm going to introduce Lewis structures. Lewis structures are used to show a model of molecules. Molecules are held together by covalent bonds. So previously we've talked about ionic bonds, and ionic bonds are found in ionic compounds like this picture here I'm showing on the left. This could be a model of sodium chloride, for example. There's a ratio of one sodium to one chlorine in this cube-like structure. Molecules are independent, and so what we're trying to do is understand how they're sharing electrons to make these molecules. Remember, co in covalent bonds, the electrons are being shared. If it's a nonpolar covalent bond, the electrons are being shared equally. In a polar covalent bond, the electrons are being shared unequally. Okay, so to really understand this, you have to look at your periodic table. So you have to know about valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons that are involved in bonding. They are found on the outer energy level. I mean, we haven't talked about energy levels in this class, but really um, the only thing you have to know is that valence electrons are involved in bonding. Now you can only make predictions for the number of valence electrons for the representative elements. The representative elements do not include the transition metals, and they don't include these inner transition metals either. They basically include the first two groups and the last six. What you have to know is that the first group, the one with hydrogen in it, has one valence electron. The second group has two valence electrons. The third group has three valence electrons. The fourth group has four valence electrons. The fifth group has five. The sixth group has six. The seventh group has seven. And the eighth group has eight. The eighth group is called noble gases. These noble gases do not like to bond with any other elements because their energy level is full. And we'll get to know more about that in the next video. You have to be able to draw the proper Lewis dot diagram for each of these elements. So if I were to say, for example, sodium, you would put, you would write this, the element Na and you put one dot. Now, that dot can go anywhere. It can go here, it can go on the left side, or it can go at the bottom. It doesn't matter. Just imagine there's an imaginary square, and you have to write the dot on one of the sides of the square. So now we'll do one from the second group. We'll pick magnesium. In magnesium, it has two valence electrons. Now, the only thing you can't do is pair them up. But other than that, you can put them anywhere. So I can put two there, I can put one here and one here. I can put them on opposite sides, it doesn't matter. The next one is the third group. I'll pick aluminum. Aluminum has three dots. Again, you can't pair them. So you have to put the three dots separately. The next group is carbon. Put four dots. The next group is nitrogen and has five. So at this point, you first put the dots individually, and then you start pairing up. Now the one that's paired doesn't really matter. I'm just putting it on top. But you notice there are three unpaired electrons and one set that's paired. The significance of this will be more evident in the next video. In oxygen, there are six valence electrons. So, one, two, three, four, and now I have to start pairing them. And notice now, there are two unpaired electrons. In the, last, in the second to last group, an example could be fluorine. And fluorine has seven dots. One, two, three, four. Now I have to start pairing them. 
So five, six, seven. We notice we only have one unpaired electron. And then in the last group, we can pick neon. Neon has eight valence electrons, and we'll notice that all of them will be paired. When they're all paired, this atom cannot bond because unpaired electrons is unpaired electrons are the location where bonding happens. So carbon can bond four times because it has four unpaired electrons. Nitrogen can bond three times because it has three unpaired electrons. Oxygen can bind two times because it has two unpaired electrons. And F can only bond once because it has one unpaired electron. So this is a short quiz and in which you label the appropriate Lewis diagrams and identify the, the number of bonds that can be made. Thanks. Have a good day.